what do I want to be when I grow up? I mean, if I could choose between anything, I would probably be a rock star. <laughs> I'd be the first hemophiliac international rock star. Hemophilia means that I'm missing a factor or a protein in my blood, factor eight or factor nine. Hemophilia A is factor eight, hemophilia B is factor nine. I have hemophilia A. And it means that my blood doesn't clot properly. I can bleed in any joint, muscle, or organ. Every day for me, regularly, I take clotting factor, infused clotting factor in my vein, and it helps prevent the bleeds. I mean, it's not like I'm never gonna have them, because it's, it's like, it's no cure, it's just prevention. But yeah, you kinda just live with it. I am Adam Stengel, I am Zach's dad. And I'm Melissa Penn, and I am Zach's mom, and we have three other kids too. When we first got a diagnosis, it was terrible, right? It's, it's a pure panic. I mean, it's absolute pure panic initially. At, at the time, it felt absolutely devastating. I mean, I, I felt just like a dark cloud had come over us. It was, it was awful. Everybody, including us, have incredible misconceptions about hemophilia. A lot of people mistake hemophilia for, you know, external bleeding, paper cut, gonna bleed to death, but it's really internal bleeding that's the problem. I mean, external, I guess, can be a problem if I got a huge, like, slash right here, but, like, typically it's not, it's the internal bleeding that hemophilia is. I remember, and it's kind of embarrassing, but we had these little ice, like, ice things. They were, like, <laughs> this big. They looked, I don't know, they were, like, little ketchup packets, and we kept them in the freezer, and he, he had bruises all the time, right? He's learning to walk, fall down, bruise. Um, and we would take these little ice packets and we would stand over the crib while he was sleeping and just like put the ice on these enormous bruises for the long, That's for how hours. Take turns. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But at the time, we didn't really have an alternative and you just want to make things better. A lot of people think I could do things that I can't and can't do things that I can't. So, like, once my teacher said, like, so in gym, I was hurt, my ankle was hurting, and then I said, hey, can I um, sit out, because that's what I'm supposed to do, and he said, no, you have to run it out, and that's not good. But then one teacher said I couldn't use a scissor, and I'm like, a scissor? Like, I could use a scissor, so it's really about just understanding, and I could do pretty much everything. I've been working in hemophilia since the early 1970s and uh, was originally involved in cloning factor VIII and what led on to the synthetic factor that's now used to treat haemophilia. So I've been able to follow this story through from a more or less complete mystery to understanding pretty much everything about haemophilia, but now we're on the track towards a cure. Very early on, I got the bug for purifying this mysterious factor eight. We didn't know what it was then. As you can see, I'm perfectly fine using a scissor. And eventually, we managed to isolate enough to get it sequenced, cloned, and then synthesized. And now, treatment depends on using synthetic factor eight. So the treatment has evolved from being very crude and quite dangerous and partially effective to now being very effective much more convenient to give so that patients will treat themselves, can treat themselves at home and maintain a sufficient level in their blood that they don't frequently bleed. It's hard to do it with one hand, so you gotta improvise and use your chin. Yeah, that's a shot. Factor is your lifeline. It, it's not that it's changed their life, it's given them life. Factor controls how I live. And without it, I don't know where I'd be. These are my trophies, like this one, and a bunch of these are from baseball, because I like to play baseball. Um, this one's from Taekwondo. I did that for a while. Pretty good at it. Because he has factor, he's on the swim team. He plays ultimate frisbee in school. He throws the football around with his friends. I mean, he runs in the running club. So factor lets him do almost everything he wants to do. Most people with hemophilia have target joints, so joints where they bleed most, and that's my hips, they're very vulnerable. So I can't do like bouncy, bouncy stuff. Horseback riding, I can't do. You just gotta be careful with that stuff. And then the typical, like any hemophilia, like hockey, 
tackle football, wrestling. I don't, that contact sports I can't do. Baseball and like taekwondo. That's not like contact sports. It's good to be active to strengthen my muscles so I don't get bleeds and also you gotta be strong, you know. I play a lot of sports. I just have to be careful. Factor is very expensive. When we say very expensive, we mean that Zach, by infusing, it costs him $3,000 a day. Now, most people don't need to infuse every day. Zach does. Certainly, if you have hemophilia B, um, which needs to infuse even less than hemophilia A, but it's still extraordinarily expensive. So we live here, and we get to decide which brand we want, how often he needs to be infused, and other parts of the world, people are just dying. It's calculated by the World Hemophilia Federation that four-fifths of patients in the world have suboptimal or no treatment at all. And so we've still got a long way to go. The new approach we're working on is called gene therapy. The concept of gene therapy is simple and was first approached over 20 years ago. It is to transfer a piece of information content in the genetic form, be it DNA or RNA, into a patient whose illness is in some way due to a defect in their information content. And nature's clever trick for doing this is the virus, and they've evolved very sophisticated machinery for getting into cells and passing on information content. In the case of a virus, the content will be make more virus. What we do is to take a virus, take out its own machinery of the DNA that says make more virus and put in a bit of DNA that says make whatever it is we want to have made. In the case of haemophilia, one of the clotting factors. Then, if we infuse that into the circulation, it homes its way in onto a cell type such as the liver cell, gets into the cell, delivers the package of DNA, and then that DNA instructs the cell, the liver cell in this case, to go ahead and start making factor eight, the missing factor. And we've shown that that cures their hemophilia. When you say there's like a test for a cure happening, right? Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Do you mean like an occasional shot that's just gonna like cure everything or just like one little shot that uh, you're done and ne never have hemophilia again? So the idea behind this trial is you get one shot and that's it. You never have, you never have to infuse again. Really? Zach was born in 2001, so it was a period of time where there was great promise for gene therapy. And I was told by some researchers that he may be cured by the time he's in kindergarten. Within 10 years, there's going to be a cure for hemophilia. I mean, I was flat out told that by a doctor. And then, within a period of a couple of years, people stopped talking about the cure altogether. We've been hearing about gene therapy for, from, from the beginning. We, uh, if that's the way it's going to cure hemophilia, then I'm, we're all for it. That's awesome. But I've been hearing about flying cars since I was a kid also, and I'm not, I'm not getting in one right now in my 40s, right? But if there could be a cure, right, that, would be, that would be great. I think uh, gene therapy was overhyped in the early days. The decades of technical development that have gone on quietly have yielded advances that now give us confidence to say, yes, gene therapy is successful now. Our partners in industry who are helping us develop this towards a um, medication that would have approval are working towards a timeline of 2018. What? Oh, we're having tacos for lunch! <laughs> yes! Oh, yeah. Oh, it looks good. If we found, like, a cure, like, just someone came to me and said, we have a cure. At first, I don't think it would affect me too much, just because I could basically do all the things I can, really. Since I already have all the medicine I need, I'd be basically allowed to do whatever I want, just like I am now. I just wouldn't have to do a shot every morning. I'd probably end up being able to do horseback riding eventually. But maybe not for me personally, but there's hope for other people who don't have the factor and stuff. Because most of the world doesn't have any treatment. So if there was a cure, I could just cure hemophilia. I, would, I don't think it would benefit me as much as, as it would benefit everyone who really needs it. I mean, sure, it would be great to have a cure, but a lot of people in the world really need it.